All right, welcome guys to another session on dynamic programming and today we're going to be talking about DPV 6.20 which deals with optimal binary search tree. Just to recap, uh, I'm just going to read a little bit from the, the problem statement here. Um, the problem statement was that optimal binary search tree, suppose we know that the frequency with which keywords occur in a program um, in a, of a certain language for instance you know, there's there's um, keywords like begin, do, else, and if, then, while. These are obviously keywords in a programming language and they have certain probabilities of occurrence. We want to organize them in a binary search tree so that the keyword, the root, is alphabetically bigger than all the keywords in the left subtree and smaller than the keywords in the right subtree. And this holds for all the nodes. So they give an example of how to compute the cost. And remember that the, when you uh, when you try to uh, search for um, a word uh, or look up a word, you have to use this principle of the fact that you know the, the left subtree is um, uh, is larger and the right subtree is smaller. So when you look at a word, if you don't match, then if it's bigger you go left, if it's smaller you go right. And based on that, the top node uh, only has one comparison. And if you succeed there, you stop. So there's only one comparison. And as you traverse down the street to search, the cost increases with every mismatch that you find. So the cost of the second level is two, the cost of the third level of the tree is three, and so on, and up to log n levels. Um, perhaps if it's a balanced tree, log n levels uh, is the depth. So the cost is given in the example, and the request is for an efficient algorithm and given n words in sorted order. Frequencies of these words are given P1 to Pn and we must output the binary search tree of the lowest cost. So um, given this problem let's um, let's just uh, try to understand wrap our heads around. Uh, we clearly are asked to find a BST of the lowest cost, least comparisons, um, etc etc for this programming language. Now just to again recap what a binary search tree is. The left subtree of the node contains only nodes uh, with lesser value or greater value, whichever one you would like. In our example, they say greater value. Uh, right subtree has, you know, in my case, greater value, but they said lesser value. Doesn't matter. But the tree is organized in clearly in a format that uh, it's easy to traverse. You go left side or right side based on if your key is bigger or smaller and you always continue down that path. So um, in this case our intuition here is that let's say there's a cost function and we're only looking at nodes from i to j or the keys from i to j and you've organized them in a sorted order from i to j, right? And each has a probability and we, we know the probabilities from i to j. Um, and the, the important thing here, the intuition is that when you've organized them like this um, and you're using dynamic programming, the simple way to think of this problem is that if I could figure out one step here, if I could pull out one key as a root, then uh, these set of keys, a large number of keys, uh, divide into the left subtree, this root that is pulled up, and the right subtree. Okay, and that is the intuition for this problem, is at that level, problem from I to J is a, is a given problem. And if I remove just one node from it, then it becomes a two small problems, and then the, you have to merge them to form the solution for this bigger problem. Now, why dynamic programming? It's dynamic programming because this R, the selection of this key is not known. So it could be any any key from I to J. You can pull I, I plus one, and so on and so on. And as you do that, that's what determines the best or the optimal solution. So that's how we'll solve this problem. Now, another um, uh, word about you know how this the math works out. And it's very interesting because when you pull this key, when you pull one of these keys up, its depth for this for the sake of argument here if this was the only tree and this was the only root then the depth becomes one here and the depth becomes two at the level of these trees so if these trees had their own cost which was predetermined remember that that depth would have increased by one because 
they are now pushed one level below this root node which we have selected for the sake of argument so that's that will become as we look at the recursion this will become the uh, the intuition for the recursion that the depth increases by one and therefore the cost of combining this step uh, increases by one for the subtrees and then the probability just needs to be added once for this r to get the overall cost of this new tree right and and then we would have many of such trees and the dynamic programming approach is to find the lowest cost subtree i'm sorry lowest cost tree so um the the recursion therefore uh is as such first of all we create this function called wij which is just simply the sum of all probabilities of all the nodes within that tree and it's not quite obvious to you the intuition is not very clear as to why we need this wij but i'll cover that in a second but the thing is that um, this wij just falls out of how we recombine the subtrees to form the solution for the the tree in question the main recursion is this eij and this eij is minimum of like we said earlier picking an r node the root node and then that root node creates these two subtrees this left subtree which is i to r minus one and this right subtree which is r plus one to j and then because we created we pulled up that uh, root node up um, we have to merge these two trees and the math of merging these two two trees uses this wij function to merge them back and create the cost of the overall tree now we will go back again and look at why that happens like that so now let's say the cost of this tree uh, is is known to you and the cost of this tree is known to you um, when you pull this root node up obviously um, every element in this tree has now the depth has increased by one because what was at root is now at depth two what was it one sorry at two has become three and so on so everything has increased by one so all you have to do is independent of the structure of this tree every node its probability needs to be summed up and same for this and then this node is one so uh, so the sum of its probability in this new tree its probability will be just you know pr and you just need to add pr here so the change on the left side the change on the right side plus the probability of this node is the new cost of the tree and so what you do is that you basically just create the w function and the w function does that from i to j it essentially just sums up all and summing up all the left subtree the right subtree changes and plus the pr that essentially turns out interestingly as the function wij which is nothing but the sum of all the probabilities from i to j so once again um, make sure you think through this structure here spend five minutes on it trying to understand why the cost function behaves like this and what is the role of this wij because at first it's not very clear as to why you need wij but the need for this wij is inherent in understanding that this pulling up this r up um, creates these two subtrees and then the overall cost of this this uh, new tree is basically cost of left tree right tree plus the change and the change is given by this wij function okay so now that we understand that let's try to proceed down solving this problem and the solution to this problem is again i would say very similar to the chain matrix multiply problem and many such similar problems that we have done before now to solve the problem first thing you do is you write them all the keywords you know one to one to n one to n you you write them as ij matrix now what it really means is that you're going from given uh, you know you have a large number of these keywords but focus yourself only on keywords from i to j right and so that's what we're trying to solve from i to j and that's why we have i on this side and j on this side and we'll create all possible combinations thereof now as usual you know we'll start off from the diagonal and uh, because all the others are not really feasible 
their meaningless values below this uh, diagonal and when you have only one to one that is only one keyword we just take its probability you know p1 so that that's the boundary condition if you only have one word then its probability of occurrence is what you use you look up a tree that many times okay um, and so um, what you will do here is that if you have two you put p2 p3 p4 p5 now that's easy let's move on to the next uh, diagonal which is the length of one now if you have length of one the uh, the index you know i to j uh, in this case it goes from one to two two to three three to four so on uh, let's just solve one to two when you do one to two there's two possibilities right you can pull one up or you can pull two up so one becomes the root in one case and two becomes the root in the other if one becomes the root there is no left tree so this probability is zero the right tree is just two so p2 and then the cost function of this change is because p1 lies at the top is basically a sigma of one to two which is p1 plus p2 so overall this is a cost and then when you pull two as the root likewise you can compute and whichever one is the lower you pick that one and you put it here okay and and so this is how we compute this um p1 to two or e1 to two here and then we do that for all the nodes and uh, essentially keep doing that here and here and the value that lies in this uh, far um, column at the top is the value or is the answer because this would give you one to five or one to n and when you do one to n basically you have solved all the keywords right you have you have the solution for all keywords so one to n this top corner here is the answer now uh, let's just quickly uh, surmise um, as to what the main key points of this problem were we were asked to compute a bst a binary search tree which is the best cost the least comparisons we were given probabilities and we utilized the fact that we could apply dynamic programming by at any step breaking a large problem into two small problems and then merging them back in this uh, dynamic programming way and the merging was obviously uh, done in a way i mean that we did not really know this uh, division point we didn't pick any point we just we computed all points and then picked the best one and so it became dynamic programming solution um, the other thing was that the way the recursion was organized was by pulling this up and the depth of these two subtrees which pre-existed as solved problems the depth increased by one and the top was obviously a depth of one which gave rise to this equation here and this wij which was sum of all probabilities now also i show this trick neat trick here that you don't have to sum wij which is sigma pij at at you know every step in fact also like dynamic programming this would uh, fall out naturally because when you get to step ij the step i to j minus one must exist before and so all you have to do is just add pj to it and you would have this function so you don't have to pre-compute this matrix in the beginning you don't have to do all that work in fact if this is millions of numbers this may take quite a lot of time um, you don't have to do that because these numbers are also pre-computed for you at the beginning and in a dynamic programming way so you can utilize this equation this recursion to compute the sigma of p i j uh, p um, k from i to j right which is this equation which helps us solve this problem so that's essentially how this problem works uh it's doesn't you know make sense in the beginning uh how to apply dynamic programming but dynamic programming is uh essentially it becomes obvious once you see that the tree starts to look pretty much like that chain matrix multiply at every step you find one cut or one uh, you know node that you need to change and that breaks the big problem into two small sub problems and a combination of those two sub problems into the main problem and once you start to see this pattern then everything starts to fall in place the other thing is that you know it kind of looks like divide and conquer approach this chain matrix multiply bst all these look like divide and conquer but the thing is in divide and conquer you just somehow pick an optimal point and split the problem and 
like you know a median or something in this case we didn't pick a median in fact we um we kept on finding the best solution uh regardless of you know which point i mean between i and j we do, do not know which the optimal point is and that's the reason why this is dynamic programming problem because we don't know how to split the problem we otherwise it kind of looks like a divide and conquer problem because you have left side right side and you merge them and you keep doing them over and over and over in this case we kind of divide them but we don't know how to divide them what is the best way to divide them so we compute all possible divisions and then we pick the best one and one other thing that i'd like to mention is that this is sometimes uh, a theorem called cut and paste is is also mentioned here in the context the cut and paste is essentially says that if you find a solution to the problem let's say we have a optimal bst then uh, if you look at any sub problem like if you go on the left side of the root or the right side of the root would that be also an optimal solution in this case if you apply this problem you will see that even sub problems must be uh, optimal and the optimality of sub problems applies by the cut paste theorem that if you look to a sub problem and if it's not optimal you can find the optimal solution to that left sub problem and paste it there and the overall cost of the solution should decrease in this case and therefore it must uh, be a contradiction and by that contradiction you can say that the solution to the whole tree if the whole bst is optimal then if you descend into any subtree those are also optimal solutions so that's the cut paste uh, theorem now uh, one final thing is that what is the order and as usual you know the order of these problems the chain matrix multiplies order in cube and that's because if you just look at this uh, this matrix it looks like order n squared because if you just look at all these values this is order n squared n and n on this side but each each point here from i you know when you go from i to j each point is not just one computation we kind of don't know the the optimal r so we compute all the r's from i to j and therefore you get this this another factor of n here so it becomes order n cube there's three loops right and so that's it guys that's uh, the solution to the optimal bst problem and hopefully you understood this and you liked the solution if you have any questions comments leave them um, below and uh, again thanks for watching um, and uh, we will see you in another episode soon bye bye